This is something that could really have a significant impact on the world because we can stop cutting down so many trees if we use this. We can rejuvenate marginal soil that we've overused and abused for so many years. We can replace fossil fuel-based raw materials. So we're not having to use petroleum-based products for making plastics and things like that. In the rolling fields of Washington State, a quiet revolution is taking root in the form of a giant, fast-growing perennial grass, xanograss, the flagship fiber of Olympia-based climate tech startup Hexus Biomass. My name is Wendy Owens, and I'm the founder and CEO of Hexus. It looks like corn and bamboo had a baby. It has these broad corn leaves and then a tall bamboo-looking stalk. It just blows your mind just to see how fast this plant grows, but nonetheless, how it's not invasive, it's not causing any problems, it's improving the soil, it's doing all these beneficial things. With Xanograss, Hexus is cultivating more than just a grass. It's growing a sustainable future for raw materials and rural communities alike. What we can do is actually help farmers generate income from that land where they're not generating income or they're generating very little income at that time. And over time, as xanograss is produced on that land, it'll add nitrogen to the soil and carbon to the soil. It'll break up hard pack. It'll reform that microbiome that's so necessary to have soil and, and high production of biomass. And then we'll give a farmer a really consistent revenue. When harvested and processed with these local farmers, xanograss becomes xanofiber which ultimately serves as a replacement for wood and fossil fuel-based raw materials in applications like fiberboard production for construction and furniture making, biofuels, industrial energy pellets, and much more. It's certainly a cause worth recognition, and Wendy is no stranger to that. But Wendy's journey to the cutting edge of sustainable commodities and material science didn't start on the farm. Not a straight line to get here by any stretch of the word. From Series Green, I'm Patricia, and this is a story of Hexus Biomass. I grew up outdoors. That was my playground. That's all I wanted to do when I was a kid was be outside. My first career was actually in mountaineering, leading hiking, canoeing trips. I did a course with the National Outdoor Leadership School one summer and just, it blew my mind. If I could still do it, if that could still be my career, I, I think I would still <laughs> be out, you know, out in the mountains. I think about my role as a CEO and as an entrepreneur as being a trip leader because there is that untraveled trail, basically breaking trail, it's new. The process of leading trip, just being there for them to facilitate their enjoyment of the outdoors, overcoming the challenges of carrying a pack or portaging a canoe, that's where I find the connection between leading trips and then leading a company. Before founding Hexus in 2018, Wendy embarked on her entrepreneurial journey, starting and exiting three companies. I had started my first company out of graduate school, and that was in technology and education, but it didn't work. I believe that if a business gets to the point where I'm not adding value or sufficient value anymore, and perhaps I've just gotten bored, then it's time to go. You know, it's, it's the right thing to do for the business and for the people who are invested in it, either as employees or investors. Her second and third companies exposed her to the shortcomings of the raw materials industry and brought on a core insight that would sow the seeds of her fourth company. Hexus. My second business that I started was in advanced materials engineering composites. And so really understanding the commodities and upstream and the materials that we use and how much material we need to use to make all the things that we have. So that experience there made me think, wow, we're not really making the highest and best use of our natural resources. There's a lot of waste happening. We're not getting the ROI that we really should, especially from agriculture, for what we put into it. There's just things that are not being used. So I was very much, of course, from the perspective of loving nature and wanting to preserve it long term, and then realizing that we are not utilizing nature and what nature has given us to the highest and best use. And so that's really what had me looking for another opportunity, an entrepreneurial opportunity to utilize the skills that I had gained from materials. And then I later also was in biotech. I'm bringing those two together to think about how do we use materials sustainably and how do we produce materials sustainably. According to Hexus, humans cut down 15 billion trees each year and use 80 million acres of cropland to produce biofuel from food crops. This is the equation that Wendy and her team aim to rewrite. First time I'd really thought about, is there a plant out there that could replace wood? 
that could be used to replace fossil fuel based raw materials. And so as I learned more about the wild type plant that I'd selected as the focus and eventually that I spread into Xanograss, I was like, wow, this is something that could really have a significant impact on the world because we can stop cutting down so many trees if we use this. We can rejuvenate marginal soil that we've overused and abused for so many years. We can replace fossil fuel based raw materials. So we're not having to use petroleum based products for making plastics and things like that. Hydrocarbon is a hydrocarbon, whether it's a plant based hydrocarbon or from fossil fuel based, but the fossil fuel base of course is based on plants. So why don't we just quick upstream the process instead of having that ancient plant-based organic based material and as crude oil how about we grow it and just use it right out of the field it was a wild type plant so i had to source different varieties of this wild plant and do it in my backyard honestly you know is this stuff going to grow how's it going to grow what does it look like as it's growing uh, a lot of research on just agricultural production i did get my family involved in helping me planting and and setting things up it was a process of selective breeding and consequently utilizing scientific method and propagation techniques and figuring out lots of failures, <laughs> some dead plants, <laughs> things that didn't work. But as I learned more, both in terms of study, but also the hands-on experience and then talking with people, I just saw it as more and more viable. So yeah, I was uh, wandering in the woods for a little bit or wandering through the tall grass, I guess is a better analogy, and then just figuring it out from there. It was an exciting process. It was frustrating. It was fun. Xanograss is in the same family as corn and bamboo. It looks like corn and bamboo had a baby. It has these broad corn leaves and then a tall bamboo looking stalk. So the leaves themselves wrap around the stalk. Even here in Washington state, we will get stalks that are over 20 feet tall in a single growing season. So it's a rapid growing plant, doesn't have seeds even, so it's not invasive. It doesn't have thorns or anything like that. It's just sort of a gentle plant. You have a product that's growing that has a high moisture content. So a lot of water in the stalk material and in the leaves and we'll dry that out. And then you end up with a dry, long stock or you end up with dry chips or something along those lines. Xanofiber, in other words. But this process wasn't just about creating a new plant variety. It was about reimagining the entire supply chain of raw materials. Looking at it from a business perspective, because it couldn't just be the science side of it, and evaluating, doing a lot of customer discovery as to what people would need from a feedstock, that was all part of it. And then how would you promote this kind of stuff too? The value of the business model in terms of being a farm to fiber platform, fully integrated from propagation through the production of the fiber in a format that's deliverable and usable by our customers. It's critically important to have this as an integrated business model. This process begins with tissue cloning of proprietary Xanograss varieties to ensure uniformity, followed by planting on marginal land to improve soil and sequester carbon. Hexus then contracts with local farmers for xanograss production at fair prices, harvests the xanofiber using proprietary technology, and then processes it into a format that serves as a drop-in solution for various industries, omitting the costly need to modify existing manufacturing systems and decreasing the reliance on wood and fossil fuel-based raw materials. We are very disjunct right now in our materials. Somebody cuts down the tree, somebody sells the tree, somebody chops up the tree, somebody then sells the chopped up parts of the tree, as an example. That just raises costs, it raises energy expenditures, and it doesn't really bring value to the farmers who are doing the production. So that fully integrated supply chain that allows us to reliably and consistently supply raw materials, but benefit the growers and the earth is something that I think is important. So all farmers, all landowners have land that is what we would consider usable or a specific crop production. And then, you know, some land that's not. And that's perfectly normal. This is the earth, it's nature, right? It, nothing is perfect. Oftentimes farmers will have a lot of land that is considered what we would call marginal. The soil biome has been destroyed over years of overuse. And so what we can do is actually help farmers generate income from that land where they're not generating income or they're generating very little income at that time. And over time, as xanograss is produced on that land, it'll add nitrogen to the soil and carbon to the soil. It'll break up hard pack. It'll reform that microbiome that's so necessary to have soil and, and high production of biomass. And then we'll give a farmer a really consistent revenue. 
they get paid on a per ton basis. They're provided with all the technical support that they need to meet their minimum volumes. So we want to build a really symbiotic relationship with these farmers and want them to do well. So we're looking at revitalizing rural communities, particularly those rural communities that maybe have desertification, have highly salinated soil. There have been mining done there. There's some kind of contamination. Dano grass will grow there. It will also take up any contaminants from the soil and refurbish that soil again. And because it is a grass and much like your lawn, you let it grow and then you mow it, you let it grow and you mow it. It's a lower labor requirement for farmers as well, but with a really high rate of return. Yet, building Hexus into the robust company that it is today hasn't been without its challenges. Funding, and that's the biggest challenge. I think we're on the 250th iteration of the pitch deck after four years. When I pitch to a corporate venture capital group, it'll be a bit different than if I'm pitching to a traditional venture capital group. When I am trying to sign up customers, that's a very different pitch deck to really, in a very short period of time, tell the story, impart the vision, and demonstrate the value. Wendy and her team have made significant progress. In one funding example, Texas has secured nearly $2 million in grant funding from the U.S. Department of Energy. I would never say that getting a grant is easy. The timing has to be right. There's a lot of things that go into it and you really need to socialize your technology over time. People genuinely want to stop using fossil fuel-based raw materials. Getting that biomass is critical. Early on, the U.S. government and other governments certainly see that that is the key. And now industry is really starting to see that having a consistent, reliable supply of biomass is the key to the bioeconomy. From her pre-Hexus days to having founded and now leading Hexus, one piece of advice has always held true for Wendy. Trust yourself and understand your industry, understand your customer, read the tea leaves, look at the data, look at history, but really trust yourself because you're gonna embody that knowledge and start executing on it.